Hi there, it's Ben Housel here, and here we're going to have a look at one of the most important tools in Final Cut Pro 10, the Select tool. We're going to be looking at how we can use it on the timeline to place and edit clips, how to make some more advanced refinements um, with our audio and video, and then also look at how we can use it with more advanced features in Final Cut Pro, such as the animation for managing animation timing um, and that type of thing. So let's dive in and begin to look at the selection tool and work through some of the, the really useful techniques that you'll be using day to day in all of your editing. We're going to start right from the beginning and just run through how you can use the selection tool in some basic scenarios. So the first thing to do is to make sure we've got the selection tool um, selected. So if we just have a look at the, the tools menu here, you can see the selection tool is the first in the list of these seven tools that we'll be using in Final Cut Pro and looking at in this video series. So once we've got the selection tool selected, then you can see here we've got a few clips dropped down at the timeline and we've got scrubbing turned on. Okay, so that means that when we move across our timeline with any tool selected, we'll scrub through either clips in our project library up here or down here on the timeline, we'll get a preview um, of those clips. Now with the selection tool, the first place to start is in the, the project library up here. So if we, first of all, uh, the simplest thing we can do with the selection tool is grab a clip, drag it down to the timeline. Okay. Now with the selection tool, we can grab a clip and drop it anywhere we want on the timeline. So if we select a clip, we can drag it down, place it between different clips. We can grab a clip and we can place it as a connected clip. And so that's the first way you'll begin to work with the selection tool when you're using Final Cut Pro 10. So the next thing you can do with the selection tool is you can select a range of a clip, okay? Now there's a couple of different ways of doing this in the project library. The first is to come across a clip, okay? And we can click and drag and make a selection um, of that clip. So you can see this yellow area now, if I click and hold and drag down, is gonna be the selection that I drag down to my timeline, okay? Now the other way of doing this, and we're gonna zoom in a little bit. So in the project library here, we're gonna drag this slider to the right-hand side here, and you see we get a slightly more detailed preview of the clips. So we can pick out some of the different shots that we have here. So we can drag across a clip to make a selection, as you can see here, or, and I'm just gonna use a shortcut here, which is Alt and X to remove that selection. If we come to a certain point in our clip, either by scrubbing along it or by playing through it and pausing, we can now mark an in point here by using the I key, the I shortcut on the keyboard, play through, and then press O to mark an out point. So we can use the selection tool to do this by scrubbing and then pressing I and O, or by playing through and marking those in and out points, okay? Then we can drag this down to the timeline, either as a connected clip or down to the timeline itself. So one shortcut I'll come to quite quickly when I'm using my selection tool and scrubbing through in the project library up here is the S keyboard shortcut, okay? So if I press S, it's gonna turn scrubbing on and off. So sometimes I like scrubbing to be on, okay? And other times I like it to be off um, so that it's less of a distraction as I'm moving through my project I don't always want the image to be flashing and changing on screen as I'm making more precise edits. So to turn scrubbing off, you can, as I said, press the S shortcut key, or we can come across here and you can see we can turn the video scrubbing here and the audio scrubbing on and off. Okay, so you can turn the audio scrubbing off on its own, or you can turn both the video and the audio scrubbing off. Let's just zoom out here and we're going to come down and have a look at the, the timeline and a couple of the different ways in which you can use the selection tool on the timeline. The first way um, that we can use this is to shuffle clips around. So with the selection tool selected and the shortcut for the selection tool here you can see is A. So I tend to keep my little finger on A and my first finger on F on the keyboard. Okay, It means I can always quickly jump between uh, different functions with my left hand. I can turn off scrubbing with S and then there are other options for editing Q, W and E um, that I come to on the keyboard as well. So if I want to, if I press Q, it's going to add the clip I have selected up here as a connected clip. W is going to add that clip as an inserted clip and E is going to add that and append it to the end of the clip. So coming back to the selection tool, if we select a clip, we can delete it. So that's one of the first uses for the selection tool. Select a clip, delete it. We can also shuffle clips around. So if we want to change the order of clips, we can grab a clip, click it and drag it. Okay. So we can move these connected clips as well anywhere 
on the timeline. Now you can see there's a vertical yellow line that pops up as I'm moving around with my selection tool. And those are basically snapping, working to kind of try and help me position things at the edit points, okay? So either snapping and snapping between clips or when I'm moving connected clips around, snapping and making sure I'm snapping to these edit points um, with the connector um, that I have here for my connected clips. Okay, we can turn snapping on and off just like we can scrubbing. The shortcut for that is N. And we can see that over here too. So as we're moving around on the timeline, selection tool allows us to select clips, delete them, grab clips, move them around. And now the next feature we have on the timeline is that sometimes you'll have an edit point and you'll want to cut it um, in a different spot. Okay, so as we see this clip coming to the edit point, we may want to take a second off the end of this clip. Okay, and basically the selection tool allows us to do that with what's called a ripple edit. So if I click and drag this clip to the left at the end, you can see this little yellow bar is shortening the end of that clip. So I'm taking off these few frames at the end of that clip, okay, and then pulling that back. If I move ahead, okay, I can do the same at the beginning of the other clip. Okay, so here what we're doing is we're lengthening or shortening the clip around that in point here on the outgoing clip or the second clip around that edit point. So we can keep doing that and that's one way that will refine our edits, okay? There's another way we can work on our edits here as well, and this is useful when you're working with dialogue, okay? If I double click, okay, I can open up my video and my audio with my selection tool, and I can edit each independently. So what that means is I can drag my audio edit so it finishes before the video ends, okay? If I go to my next clip, double click on the audio to open it up, I can get the video here to start after the audio has started, okay? So we have this overlapping video from the clip, the incoming clip with the audio from the outgoing clip, okay? So these two clips are overlapping. And this is really useful for working with dialogue. It allows us to introduce dialogue before we actually cut to that person or action um, that's taking place on screen, okay? Um, so this is called a J cut, okay? And the reverse, if we double click here, and move this guy out of the way, Okay, and so the reverse, if we do this and this, and this is where snapping comes in handy. I'm gonna be able to snap that right to the end there. Um, the reverse is an L cut. So we have a, a J cut because it's kind of hooked like a J and an L cut because it's hooked like an L. Okay, with a video here ending before the audio for that video and then the reverse there. Okay, you'll find that really useful when you're working with videos. If there's ever a jump cut and it feels like the voice and the shot are changing a little too abruptly, then using one of these cuts can just kind of help ease the, the edit in, okay? So I'm just gonna double click on these to close these back up. Okay, and we can see where we have our J and L cuts here because this darker area where we can see and know that the audio is overlapping. I'm just gonna zoom out a little here. So the next thing uh, we can do with our selection tool is make some adjustments to the audio, okay? So you can see here, as I'm hovering over my clips, I'm getting some little icons popping up for zero dB, okay? And zero dB basically means the audio hasn't been adjusted from the original sound of that video. Now, if I wanna drop audio, okay, for the whole clip, then I can drag this line down. And sometimes this is the quickest way to remove the audio from your clip. So we just hover over a clip, drag it right down to minus infinity, and we basically turn the audio off for that particular clip. Now, we can do some more refined editing of the audio um, with our selection tool by using one of the modifier keys. So if I hold down the Alt key here, you can see I get a little diamond that pops up next to my arrow now, and that means I can add a keyframe, okay? So if I add one keyframe here, I can bring that up, and add another keyframe just ahead in time a little and drop that down. And now you can see with the selection tool, I've made a little dip in the audio. So I've gone from minus 14 decibels, or I could bring this back up to zero, and then down here to minus 90 decibels. So sometimes if you're cutting and editing between different audio tracks, so if we were mixing another audio track below this track, we want to dip one and raise another audio track. So we might have something that looks like this visually and your audio timeline, okay, where we're bringing one audio track down and another audio track up, either as audio that would be invisible, like this audio would be behind this clip at the top, or audio um, for a clip that we're cutting in 
here, but still with some of that background or ambient noise um, going on in the background. So we can edit our audio here using the selection tool. The classic would be that we would dip this down, okay, and then bring it back up and do the same for the other clip. Okay, so we're doing some basic audio mixing tool all straight from the selection tool or the select tool in Final Cut Pro. We can also do some audio fades at the beginning and end of our clip. So you'll see if I zoom in a little here, and at the end of the clip I've got this little blue marker. And if I drag that to the right, and this one from the right to the left, then you can see I've got an audio fade at the beginning at the end of my clip. And I can change this if I right click to a linear fade, okay, to an S curve and to a plus 3 dB fade, which basically kind of boosts the audio through that fade. Um, and all those different methods, as you learn more about editing, will kind of come in handy. So look, listen, and kind of learn about how your audio is playing back with your video and begin to understand how you can improve that and refine that as you develop your editing. So with lots of the tools in Final Cut Pro, we can also bring up contextual menus for, for different features as well. So, so I'm just going to zoom out here from these clips and I'm just going to work on this clip. I'm going to pull it down to the main timeline. Okay, so this unchanged clip. If I come to this clip and right click, you can see I get some different options that I'll be able to work on with my select tool. Okay, so I can expand audio and video, which basically does the same as double clicking on the audio. Okay, and I can right click and collapse that as well. I can expand the audio components which is gonna expand the audio in more detail. So if I had different tracks um, of audio, then it would expand those, those different tracks, okay? And then we can also show the video animation, which if we zoom in on this clip, okay, you can see we don't have any animation set up here at the moment, um, so, but if we set up a, a simple transform animation, um, we'll get a sense of how this would work. So basically a scale animation. So I'm gonna come up to this, make sure I've got my video animation showing. I'm gonna make sure I've got my inspector up here on the top right showing, and you can show it by going to window, show inspector, if you don't see it, okay? And here up in the inspector, I can increase and decrease the size of my clip on the timeline. Okay, so we'll scrub through here and find a, a shot where we can zoom in that works well. So we'll take this kind of more static shot um, of these, the skateboarder and this gentleman in the car uh, kind of having a bit of a, a discussion about where you should be skateboarding. I'm going to come up to my inspector, add a keyframe in here, and then I'm going to scrub ahead in time, okay, and just increase the scale. Okay, and now you can see between those two frames, we're zooming in and we can follow the action as well. We can also increase the speed of the zoom in by dragging these closer and that's where using the selection tool in the timeline uh, really comes into its own. Okay, so we can select these and we can play through, okay, and decide whether it's a fast enough zoom or whether we want a kind of real sharp kind of zoom. And we can mix things as well. One nice thing about working with the keyframing within the inspector here is that we can keyframe the scale and also things like the anchor point um, as well. And we can make, we can select those um, too. Okay, so we could edit the scale here and then we could also add in an edit of say the position so that we, when we zoomed in, we reframe that shot as well. So I can adjust my X position, the left and right here and my Y position here. And then really in the timeline, what I'm using the selection tool for is to adjust the speed of that transformation. So let's just zoom this so I can see both those keyframes. So my zoom is happening here over one second, okay? And I can increase the speed of that by dragging these, okay? So basically that's where using the selection tool in the timeline comes into its own is actually be able to adjust the timings of your transformations and keyframing for these different elements within Final Cut Pro. Okay, we can also right click on these, um, delete the keyframes, and go back to the video before we'd added those keyframes. So let's just hit Shift and Z. So those are quite a few of the main ways in which I'm using the selection tool in Final Cut Pro 10 to edit on my timeline. And one very last thing that I want to cover here 
when we're working with the selection tool is the ability to duplicate clips. So we're going to use the Alt Modifier key to do this. So essentially, if we select any clip on our timeline, we hold down the Alt key, we can drag that clip and it will create a copy of it. Okay, And I'm just placing it in spots between the different clips. So you can see my clips reshuffling um, as I'm dragging, holding down the Alt key and duplicating those clips. I can also duplicate clips up to a connected timeline as well. So if I hold down the Alt key and drag up to a connected timeline, and this is quite a nice way of um, splitting uh, the clip as well. So if I want to add a color effect and um, to part of that clip in the, the top timeline there, the connected clip, then what I can do is come to my effects across here on the right. So I've duplicated the clip holding down Alt. I could add, for instance, a, a colorize to this clip. Okay, and then I can go to the video options up here, crop from the right and from the left. Okay, and then we've created a slice of a kind of colored clip and within the center of that clip. Obviously, we can work on uh, different kind of color blend modes, but you can see you can get start to get some nice effects by holding down the Alt key, duplicating that clip, and then using that duplicated layer in sync with the layer below to add some effects. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Um, there's a lot of neat tools and tricks in Final Cut Pro when you're working with these different tools. And, and I hope you check out some of the other tutorials that I've made about the trim, position, range selection, and blade tools in the future.